five, four, three, two, one. Welcome back, men. Or, well, men and women. I <sighs> keep it cool. Um, so. I'm, I guess I'm just gonna, um, go over my opinions on all the flanker weapons, including reskins. Keep in mind that this is all in my opinion, so if I say a weapon is bad, that doesn't mean it's bad, I just don't find much of a use for it. Alright, cool. Control point enabled! Right. Get out and capture it! Alright, well, let's get started. Ah, uh, stock lever shotgun. I love the- I love this weapon, honestly. It can do upwards of 105 damage, and, um, in general, in general, its clip size is very forgiving. And just, just listen to the reload. Like, something in my monkey brain just clicks whenever I hear it, and it, and it, it sends dopamine through my brain to hear a ding, and then, and then the reload. There's something beautiful in it. If you like Star Wars, you're gonna love this gun. The Mule Mauler 600. This is essentially a lever shotgun reskin. So what? It, so it's essentially just the same thing except laser gun, and it. And instead of just knocking enemies, and instead of just making, and um, in but. <laughs> but it also just completely vaporizes the enemies and turns them into dust. So I mean. Not gonna lie, it's a pretty cool weapon. The BFB, or Babyface Blaster, for those who need more conf- Well, Babyface's Blaster. So... I mean, the reload isn't really the greatest, but I mean, it, it's still- At least there's, there even is a reload animation. Um, so this weapon starts off really slow. Keep in mind, you're slow. At first. Then you go, like, Sonic. And, unlike in TF2, you don't lose your boost if you get just touched by the air molecules, so that's pretty fantastic. So, this weapon is pretty nice. I should probably use it more, but I mean, I'm kind of a tryhard, so I don't jack around that much. The Lepara DB, or, or the sawed-off shotgun. Or the fucking, um, um, man, what is going on with my brain today? Um, or the, um, uh, or the, um, uh, double shot, the double barrel shotgun. Um, in my opinion, this weapon is actually pretty good. Um, so it fires twice, for starters. It has extreme knockback, so you can get environmental kills pretty easy. And, um, uh, Instead of having the like um the it instead of having the normal taunt, Let's it notice. has the pistol taunt for some reason. No reason no idea why, but I mean it's something. Oh I forgot to mention this, but you can also um uh you can also if you shoot if you jump, shoot, you can increase you can jump higher. And you also have knockback, so that's kind of an a minor issue if you're jumping. Another weapon reskin, the Mac Coach. It's a um Lupara DB reskin. The Mac Coach. I honestly really like this weapon. It's a shame. It's a shame I have pretty. It, a shame my my aim sucks dick though. Especially when using these type of weapons, because it's kind of like a um, kind of a difficult scenario when trying to like kill people with it. Anyways, um, shortstop. Um, man, I'm just running out of things to say. I don't really use. To be blatantly obvious, um, I don't really use any other scout, any, um, other flanker primaries. Since I'm, uh, I'm just, well, I just use, I just use the best, or in my opinion is the best, um, the, um, lever shotgun, or the mule mauler. Um, so, it has a tighter spread, so that just, so that basically just means that, hey, like, hey, um, just go for longer range shots. It has less- unfortunately, though, it has lower damage and- and less damage ramp up, so that sucks. It also reloads its full all clip all in once, and it also looks pretty nice, not gonna lie. I really like the design. 
the shotgun cannon. It's essentially the Krankenstein for flanker and or or for TF2 players, the old panic attack. Essentially what this weapon promotes is just a flanking playstyle. Essentially punishing you for whiffing all your shots with death and and it, and accepting it and um uh, rewarding you for like a very quick burst of damage being able to kill a brute really quickly. So overall this weapon's all right. Just um lever shotgun's kind of better. Okay. To be fair, I will admit the recep the the specialist is really good, if not overpowered. It has a lower damage, but but you have one more bullet, you lose but you lose some of your reserved ammo, but that's okay cuz because you have seven shots, you also fire faster, and let's not forget that the reload animation, the reload sound kind of sounds nice. And I also really like the, um, like, animation for, um, when the reloading stops. And you can't forget that you cap, cap, um, cap, cap the points at three times, at three times speed instead of two times speed, as all the other classes. The soda popper! Um... Uh, so, so, so it's essentially the Lupara DB, except no double jump, um, um, there's no more knockback, which is, which is a good bad scenario, um, you don't have a double jump, wait, did I, didn't I even say that? And then there's this hype thing, if you do enough damage, you can just start flying. Yeah, that's how I'm gonna put it. You literally just start flying. You essentially make it impossible for troopers, for troopers and uh, and annihilators to even be able to touch you at that point, honestly. But I mean, it's not impossible if it isn't if it's possible. So the one drawback to me is that is that the for me is just the um two shots and the no double jump until you get your hype all built up. That's that's just a minor issue, and that's probably just my skill issue. Alright, final primary. The Perceptionist. Yeah, it is Perceptionist. Okay, I got it right. Let's go. So, this gun actually looks pretty nice. It sucks that it kind of sucks ass. Um, you see, you lose one bullet per shot. Slow, have a s slower reload. Your reload is also cooler, by the way. And also the firing animation is cooler to me. Well, well, I mean, it doesn't the coolest, but I mean, it's still pretty nice. For many crits from behind. Honestly, this weapon is really underwhelming, but I mean, but I mean, at least it's not the soda popper. Eh? Ah, the pistol. I, I actually really like the pistol. I used to use the um, uh, the conventional because because to me it was just blatantly better. But now I use the pistol more. Because of a certain reskin for the pistol that I'll get into right after the pistol. So it has 12 shots. It fires... It fires at, like... The damage can go be, like, 20. And, um, let's not forget... Um, uh, we don't have the cool reload on, like... We don't have the cool spin... Spin reload for... in From TF2. So that... So that's, like, the one drawback of this gun to me. This is the reason why I use the, why I even use stock pistol. The genuine the rave the genuine raven. Like, I don't know why. But something clicks in my brain when I fire this weapon. Even even though I don't use it that often. And for some reason it goes really for some reason it goes really well with the mule mauler. Ah, the conventional. You have a higher- you have three more bullets. I don't- I don't know why you have three more bullets. The gun, in general, looks a little bit cooler than the stock pistol. And- and, um, it has a few more- and it has more reserved ammo. But- but that doesn't mean- it, but you have a damage penalty. So, to be fair, it's pretty- it's pretty good. Especially with the faster fire rate, since you're not really using the conventional at, as a, like, you know, as you know, like a long range sniper. Because you're most likely going to be at close range, because you probably just whipped all your shots with your primary, so, I mean, 
I mean, just saying, because I have skill issue, to be fair. The concealed carry. When you kill someone with the concealed carry, you get, you get a, um, you essentially consume a, a medium health pack, and you will gain overheal if, if you're at max health, or if, or if your medium health, or if your health on kill, um, exceeds your max health. The downsides, though, um, wait, does it have a damage penalty? Yeah, it does. So it has a damage penalty, and you can't get overheal. I'm also pretty sure it has a faster fire rate. I don't know. Let me check. Yeah, it does. But it doesn't have the same perk as the conventional, so keep that in mind. The winger gain greater flight capabilities with, with a higher jump height. But then gain more damage at the price of losing part half of your clip. Honestly, the flint the main primary thing where it goes for this weapon is the is the higher flanking abilities. Wait. Wait, do you in general just have a higher jump height? I don't know if it you have to have the winger out, but but to be fair, um, this weapon isn't the greatest. But I mean, it wasn't really made for combat, in my eyes, at least. The six the six point shuriken. Um, so you throw it at an enemy, it deals damage on hit, and then it and then it causes the enemies to bleed for two seconds. You can't pick up the shuriken. You can only th you can only throw it once, but it ha but it recharges in a time span of like. Five seconds, maybe? I don't know. <clears throat> I actually do not know. But I don't really use this weapon at all. Unless I'm running Babyface's Blaster. For obvious reasons. The Mad Milk, or some people call the Cum Jar. Or the Semen Jar. Uh, I don't even know why I said that, honestly. So, so when you throw it... In a radius, it essentially acts like the, um, Lemonade or Gerati. It, uh, except instead of t enemies taking mini crits, 35%- Some of the damage you deal, or 35% to be specific, of the damage you deal heals back- Back your health. You can use it to also extinguish your enemy- your allies, but it deploys slower, and you can- Come on now! You can cover yourself by accident. And, uh, and, um, you can't really, like, pick it back up. So, in general, if you want to play supportively, this is probably your best bet. Bloxy Cola. You become invincible for 8 seconds when you drink it, right after this animation plays. Um, you can't attack, and you also run faster. And you, you're all, oh yeah, I already mentioned you're invulnerable for 8 seconds. Um, if you don't take any damage, nothing happens. And if you're at max health when you and you when you run over an ammo pack, your drink is automatically refilled. But but when you take dam when you're when you're supposed to take damage, you'll get slower Help once me, all doctor! once the effects run out. So that's like and and in general, I don't really use this that much. Except when I'm running holy mackerel to go for fish kills, then then I use it. Since honestly, it's my best option. Which is brutal. When you drink it, you gain mini crits, but you are also marked for death, and you're all, and you also run faster. It also makes your gun gold. So, so I mean, if you want an Australium or a titanium weapon, but you don't, but you don't want to use the the Market Gardener or the or the um or the um revolver, this is probably your best bet. I mean, though, dude, look at that. That's, that's pretty nice. Stock bat. Um, well, to be fair, this weapon does 35 damage per swing, but you swing a lot faster. I think two times as fast. Um, so technically you do f a whole five more damage damage than, um, uh, than um, all the other melees, I think. I don't know. But I mean, I don't really use flankers and melees that much since I I just use my 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 um revolt since I either you how did I almost say revolt 
since I either fall back to my pistol, or I fall back to my, or I just back up, reload, and just shoot with my primary. So, to me, the bat isn't all the most useful, but I mean, I mean, as pointless as it is, the 20, the crits on 25, on targets with 20, minus 25%, with, um, 25% of their health remaining is, is kind of helpful. Oh, oh. <laughs> The killer fish from San Diego. Okay, with the holy mackerel all the way. The Boston Basher. Um. Actually, oh wait, fuck. It's called the Brooklyn Basher. Shit. Um. So it swings slower. It has a higher damage. On hit, you cause bleeding on your target. And it has more damage. But if you miss, wait, no, the bleeding is also caused for five seconds. I just remembered that. But if you miss, hit yourself. So you can use it to help build Uber to, to prove that you have a skill issue and that you're a big dumbass and for hitting yourself because because the Brooklyn as I like to say say the Brook if you can't if the Brooklyn Basher is going to hit someone even if it's you or you can use it to to essentially triple jump but I mean at that point you may as well just use the um fucking um the um uh, atomizer. Alright, anyways, um, I'm pretty sure I have no- Fuck. <laughs> Speaking of which, the, um, atomizer, um, it has a slower swing speed, lower damage, but guess what? When you hold it out, you can triple jump for the price- you can- you can do a third high jump. You can do a third very high jump for the price of 10 health. Wait. Yeah, 10 health, never mind. So that's pretty neat. I mean, at least you have to pay something to triple jump, unlike in TF2. I mean, to be fair, the jump is kind of higher, so... Wooden sword. I used to use this weapon way too much. So this weapon comes out quicker. Honestly, the, um, the, um, pullout animation looks mesmerizing as hell. Um, so you only do... It does a 75% damage penalty, but when you... But it crits when you would normally mini-crit. And when you hit an enemy, one by one, they're marked for death. The hit animation, the hit sound for, like, on something also sounds pretty dope, to be honest. But I mean, to be fair, it's a wooden sword, so what do you expect? I actually don't remember the damage specifically, but, I mean, that's, that's my fault. Because I have a bad memory. I haven't used this thing in a while. The Sandman's fucking overpowered, period. It has a, it has a damage penalty... But you get to launch a baseball at your enemies that that can stun that I mean not stun slow them down temporarily. You can pick up your baseball. You can pick up your baseball after hitting it, and you can also pick other flankers' baseballs up to hit them to hit other people with their baseball. So if you ask me, this weapon's kind of overpowered. It it all it also doesn't really do anything really. It's basically the Sandman from TF2 if it didn't have have its damage penalty. This weapon is honestly really overpowered. I do not have the rally racket, so we won't be going into that. But we will be going into the Grill Scout. Wait, is it called the Grill Scout? Yeah, it's called the Grill Scout. So basically, on when you hit an enemy, so basically when you hit an enemy with the, an enemy with this thing, they're ignited, and you do mini crit damage when you would normal when you would do nor a mini crit damage on a burning target. So, this weapon's pretty good for, like, if you have, like, an arsonist to back you up. But honestly, you're you're probably using this weapon for support since you remove debuffs on, when hitting an ally, to be fair. So, I mean, I mean, at least the weapon looks really cool. Anyways, let's get into the holiday spirit and go to... The candy game! Did I just say the candy game? What? Mm -hmm. I meant candy game, fuck. Man, I cannot speak today. So anyways, the candy cane. Um, it does mini crits instead of crits on enemies with 25% or less health. Um, when you kill an enemy with, I believe, any weapon, um, it drops a small health pack that can be picked up by anyone. It's a good-bad scenario. I'm pretty sure this also has a damage penalty. But the main downside to it, is, I think, is the explosive damage vulnerability. Oh no, it, you don't get a damage vulnerability. Oh, and when you die, a small health pack is dropped. But you lose, um, 
ammo for both of your on for both of your stuff. So that's somewhat problematic. Anyways, for the next festivi festivized weapon, and the, our final weapon for today, we'll get into the Rap Assassin. Personally, my favorite flanker weapon, and the weapon I use the most. Um, it launches a, a Christmas ornament, or, or a bulb, for those who want to be extremely specific on what the game calls it. It has a faster recharge f from the Sandman, instead of being 10 seconds being, being 7.5 seconds. And, but downside is the bulb also will cause bleeding for like, for like two to five seconds, I don't know. It also doesn't, it, if it's airborne, also, if it, it doesn't have the same stat where if it's airborne for a second, it causes crits. That, that doesn't happen here. So, take that. TF2 stand, TF2 fucking, never lost my mind. Anyways, um, the main downside to it, though, and why, and why I personally also don't, it's personally a love-hate situation for this weapon, um, is that it has a, uh, seven, uh, that it, is that you do 12 damage every single melee hit. And also, and I hate, but love it. Whenever I'm bored and doing something, I like to challenge myself and try to get a kill using the Rap Assassin melee hits, and without using the ball, the ball, or the Christmas ornament. Or the bobble. The bulb. Whatever. Another downside for it that isn't descript described is that um, you can't pick up the Christmas ornament once it once you hit it. You either have to go go all the way back to spawn and go go to the resupply cabinet, grab it, and then just constant then just hit more balls. Hit more balls with your with your um your um wrapping paper. And I just realized what I just said. Or you can wait 7.5 seconds for that. All right. Well, I'm pretty sure um, I didn't forget anything. All right. Let me actually double check. What the fuck is that? Oh. Oh dear. Not this thing. Ah! <sighs> not this thing. Well, I mean, it's not all bad. I suppose. Um, well, so this thing comes out slower, um, the snowball can't be picked up, it also has, like, I, th I believe its charge time is the same as the Sandman, um, the ball, the snowball only does one damage, and, but, I mean, and the, um, like, blinding thing isn't even that great. All it does is essentially just mark them, but they don't take mini crits at all. And it also blocks the screen for like three, two to three seconds. I don't really know. I mean, and it also loses the upside of having doing crits to t to targets with under twenty five percent health. But that's like all of the of flankers other melees except for the um except for the holy mackerel. But the holy mackerel is a reskin, so it doesn't technically it doesn't count as a different weapon. At least in my eyes. But I mean, on the bright side, at least this thing doesn't have a damage penalty, right? Right? Yeah, right. Wait. Oh, this thing takes 12.5 seconds to recharge. Damn. Damn, this weapon kind of sucks. Man, you're better off using... Man, you're better off just using your own fists, honestly. God damn. Alright, I'm making sure I didn't forget anything this time. Okay, I did forget to get something else, but I mean, it's just another reskin, so... To be fair, um, it's not that big of a deal, so... Um... Fly high, buddy. 